to do it then. All right. So true or false, praise and worship music should stir the heart and emotions in order to be effective. Hmm. Okay. All right, Brother Jordan, let's hear your for your thoughts first. Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> so I was actually saved um, during a worship service, but this is where we overcomplicate things. When we say it's to stir our heart and emotions, this is what we're talking about with the parable of the sower, when the seed falls and, you know, there are those people who kind of, they're saved and then kind of fall away because a lot of their salvation was based off of an emotional response. We're not here to, our spiritual walk should not be dictated by our emotions. Our emotions don't mean anything. Our emotions fluctuate based off the day. Um, it, the people who are relying on their emotions and their feelings, of course, they're going to experience a lot of episodes in their life where they're not feeling um, as if they are the most diligent or loyal Christian, there are going to be times where they question their salvation because it all comes down to what do I feel like today? And it's important to realize that, the, you know, when we get to eternity, we don't have these emotions. We have spiritual fruit, such as joy, peace. These things aren't emotions. They're spiritual fruits. And it's important to realize that we can't pay mind to our emotions and our thoughts and hold them as such a reliable standard when it's literally just biology and um, programming that's done through our brain and the chemistry in our body. So to rely on that to be what stirs you, it almost seems somewhat of a superficial worship. If you're tr if you're going into worship for the sole intent to be emotionally stirred and not to be edified, not to bring glory to the Lord, because that is what worship is. It is your worship to the Lord. It's not about you at all. It's all about bringing glory to God. And we have so many churches and <laughs> I'm already ready for the hates in the comments, but I'm just going to call them out. Um, I personally do not listen to Bethel, Hillsong, or Elevation because they are heretical groups and they produce a lot of heretical songs. And I think a lot of people fall into this belief that, oh, it's okay if I listen to their songs and just don't agree with their theology. But what people often overlook is that just by simply listening to their songs on YouTube or anything like that, you're actually providing money for that. You're basically tithing into their efforts and you're giving them the money to push their heresy. And these groups, especially Bethel, are just wicked to the core and they do nothing but perverse the gospel. They lead millions of people astray. So we definitely need to also be conscious of what we're choosing to worship because organizations like that will rely on, you know, creating an emotional stir and um, it's just utter heresy sometimes. Like, for example, big song going around, Reckless Love of God. That's one of the most heretical songs I've ever heard in my entire life. But you have the most devout Christians out there singing and worshiping to it. But and then they it's just I don't know. I don't want to go too deep because I could really ramble on about this. But it's very important for us to know why we worship, what we choose to worship with, the words that come out of our mouth and how it edifies us through the process of worshiping and drawing close to the spirit. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sister Renee, okay, are you emotional? Do you, are emotions important to you in, in responding uh, to whether it's music or anything else in our faith? Yeah, uh, emotions are a way that the enemy can trick people into thinking they've had a spiritual experience with God. and. Uh, for instance, I was with a girlfriend of mine. The church was totally false, so, totally superficial. They turn down the lights. They play their rock band. Everybody's holding their hands up in worship, supposedly. And she was like, and I could feel the Holy Spirit. And I had tears rolling. I said, really? I've seen you do that at rock concerts when we were in our teenage years. Remember that time we saw Motley Crue and they played that Home Sweet Home and you had tears rolling? I said, baby doll, do not get it twisted. Do not get it twisted. I've seen people pass out 
at an Elvis concert because they were so emotionally stirred when they saw him. Don't confuse it. So the thing here is we sing praises to God. The old hymns have it right. It's the lyrics that that uh, properly give the gospel. Uh, the, the songs are biblically accurate. Um, and we can focus on those words and sing them to the Lord. Again, uh, our worship is not about pleasing us. As Jordan said, it is about pleasing God. Um, we are told also, hey, every instrument you have, play it unto the Lord. There is nothing wrong with drums, guitars, whatever you want to play, play it for him. But do it with love in your heart to him. Whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. So this is not to condemn people for liking certain music, but don't think because you got emotionally stirred up. That's what that whole system is built for. It's a false form of spirituality. It replaces true spirituality. We are feeling creatures. We want to have evidence. We want to feel something and be stirred emotionally. There's a reason the church has turned down the lights and play the loud music and have a light show and 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 have crescendos uh to the music brings you to the precipice of joy they they manipulate you with music as a false sense of spirituality and i'm sorry to say it but it's not legit you see people in the pentecostal churches sometimes working themselves into a frenzy passing out rolling around on the ground all of that and I, I'm not saying that God cannot work emotionally. Of course he can. But a lot of this stuff is geared to so that you're chasing something of the flesh rather than a real relationship with God. You know, one of the main things that my spirituality suffers in, be still and know that I am the Lord. That is the toughest one for me is just to be still and contemplate him. Not to have to talk, but just to sit and listen. That's a hard thing to do, but it's one that most of us uh, suffer with. So uh, there is a place, you know, uh, David uh, played the harp and it said the evil spirit from God was upon Saul and David took a harp and played with his hands. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. So uh, music is very powerful and can be used. But you see here that it was Saul who was comforted because Saul was emotionally comforted and David was of the Lord. The evil spirit left. But you'll see in I, I think it's Ezekiel where Satan had pipes and timbrels and it, he was a musician. So he knows how to use those things, too. So I don't want you to feel condemned like i'm saying if you put your hands up at church and they they do the lights down and stuff that you're doing something wrong i'm just saying it's geared towards making you feel like something godly happened or a divine encounter happened when it did not so um it's it's important that we don't rely on feelings because feelings come from thoughts and if your thoughts are wrong, your feelings will be wrong. That's why you get people around here uh, just anxious and upset and scared all the time because their thoughts are wrong. You know, the truth is, if you trust Christ, you're already seated in the heavenly places. But if your thoughts are on the wrong thing and you're thinking that God is mad at you, you don't have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Why? Because your thoughts are wrong and the feelings follow the thoughts. So uh, be very careful with this. Uh, it, it is a way to make you think you had a divine encounter when you did not. I see a lot of this false stuff happening in some of the charismatic churches. I am not against charismatic churches. I am not against people feeling emotional about the Lord. I am not against any of that. But just be aware of what's real and what's not. What's pleasing you and what's for the Lord. Whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. It's all to please him. Yes, amen. 
Well, I think uh, both of you made a lot of very good points about this. Uh, um, on one hand, um, it would be wrong, I think, to um, uh, say we need to leave our emotions out of our faith. And then on the other hand, it would be wrong to uh, require it and say, if, if you don't have these emotional experiences, then you never received the Holy Spirit. Uh, so I, I, you know, it's just like so many other things in our faith, uh, in various theological questions that we try to answer. There's a correct answer, and then there's extremes taking it too far this way or too far that way. And um, I would say that it would be probably uh, helpful and uh, wonderful for a lot of people to have these emotional experiences, whether it's with music or whether it's in their private prayer time, or uh, th that's fine. We, we don't want to say that it's, uh, it, you need to be solemn and, and, and stern and, and no emotions, but um, the, we also don't want to use it as a test, just like the last question. Well, these things should not be tests for someone that if they, if you haven't had these emotional experiences that I've had, then we, we don't really know if you really got saved because you should have, should have been so po powerful emotional experience. Uh, I personally, uh, you know, there are times where I've had these real, been real emotional in my, in my prayer. And I remember even the very night I got saved, it, it was very emotional. Uh, uh, but some people, they, they expect and, and require that you have to shed tears at the moment of salvation. If there's no tears, no contrition, or even tears, then you, you didn't really get saved. Um, so um, I passed that test. I shed some tears, but not for the reason they think that you need to shed your tears or shed your tears over remorse and regret over your sin. Uh, I shed tears of joy that, that, that when I understood finally how much God loved me personally. That was uh, an emotional experience for me. But my experience, I cannot expect everybody had to have the same experience I had or else I challenged their, their faith. So it's easy to go wrong uh, in both directions on this. But um, I, I think that uh, I, I enjoy uh, music that stirs my emotions and stirs my soul. Uh, but I think it is true what, what, what Rene said, that sometimes this is a, a false sense of, of um, understanding that, that what's going on. They think that the emotional uh, experience they're going through is a validation that, that they are, uh, there's a conversion, whereas maybe they don't even know what the gospel is, but they are just emotionally stirred over, over something about Jesus or the Bible, and, uh, and yet uh, you find out, well, are you certain you're going to go to heaven and why? Well, because I just shed tears over my sin and I'm going to stop sinning now. I made a promise to the Lord. That's why. See, you know, until you dig in and, and find out what is your faith based on, as it says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, verse 1, this is what we're standing on. Are you standing on the gospel? Is that what you're relying on, what Jesus did for you and his promise to you? All right. Uh, any more, Renee? Or, uh, yeah, I, I, I knew uh, it was a possibility of what I was saying being misunderstood. These old hymns like Amazing Grace, Blessed Assurance, uh, like every time I hear in the garden, I well up with tears. It's what we sang at my uh, uh, son's dad's funeral. You know, the, the, the song, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. That song, they, they fill me up. They're, but they're biblically accurate. But if I hadn't had an emotion, would it have made it any less true? Of course not. Uh, my thing here is not that it's right. I think it's great to have an emotional experience. I think it's great. I get teared up when I read Isaiah 53. We should have feelings for the Lord. We should be filled up with love for him. That is that is not my point. My point is we we got people in churches 
raising their hands up in there because they've been manipulated like a rock concert and the thinking they had some divine encounter. They couldn't tell you what the gospel is. They got plenty of religion or maybe they're new age and they just say, oh, Jesus, hippie love, that kind of thing. But it's not based on any kind of real faith of understanding what the gospel is and standing on it. So my thing is don't rely on emotion to be your gauge. The word of God is what we we test all things by. We test every spirit, whether it be of God, based on his word. So my thing is, yes, of course, I hear an amazing hymn. I get emotional. Uh, praise and worship should be emotional for you. You're spending time with the Lord. I am not putting that down. That is important. I think we should start every prayer, every Every time we spend time with the Lord, we should go to him with praise and worship and thanksgiving and then make our requests known. I believe that's the order it should be done. So please don't misunderstand me or think that I'm against that. It's just sometimes you can have a, an emotional experience to imitate divine encounter. And it's not always the case. We cannot rely on these things, especially if you're 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 just having some guys repeat little like i heard uh i think it was hillsong or something one of those new apostolic things where they were calling down fire from heaven i'm like don't call fire down on me that's judgment why are you calling fire down what do you let your fire fall no lord don't let your fire fall on me i don't think they know what they're crying out for so you you know you got to be careful with these songs they can be catchy and and but there's usually no substance to to the new ones you know that in these big concert halls and stuff but the old hymns you can't go wrong with them you can't go wrong with the psalms so you know let's just use some discernment on this issue that's all absolutely and uh i had to keep like removing myself because i kept laughing every time her name was talking <laughs> But um, one way that you guys can check to see if you are possibly being emotionally manipulated in your worship service is every time they go to prayer, do they have solemn music continuously playing in the background? Or do they stop the music to pay reverence to the Lord and let his spirit be what moves? That's one thing that I see, you know, for example, when I was in one of my little youth groups, there was somebody always there with a guitar and once we got to the prayer section of our little group meeting they would just start breaking out the guitar and start randomly playing it and it's just like is there really a need for the music it's just so they can trigger an emotional response because if you feel so emotionally charged one way or another you're likely to come back so just some things to keep in mind <laughs> 